Hi, I'm Eric. I'm the Weekend Bike Tech here at FLX. And this weekend, this episode, I'm gonna go through the most common questions I get as a bike tech. Right off the bat, the most common question I get is, tell me about the Baby Maker. The Baby Maker is featured right here. It's our best-selling e-bike. Um, it is a uh, urban kind of city commuter style bike, which is on traditional track geometry. It's a great all around e-bike. And something that you'll notice here is that it looks a lot different than the traditional e-bikes. And that's because the battery is hidden in the down tube here. That makes it a lot lighter, comes in around 35 pounds. So a lot, uh, a lot lighter than your traditional e-bike that's much heavier. Um, single speed and it's, and we put this Gates uh, belt drive on it. It makes it really smooth, really sleek and not as messy as your traditional chain with oil bike. On a full charge, under ideal conditions, you can get up to 70 miles. Um, my commute here, and I ride the Baby Maker in, is 46 miles round trip. I'm lucky enough to have a charger at work, so I go one way, uh, no problem. It takes me about one bar, and then I charge and go back home. Um, under same thing, ideal conditions, it'll go up to 28 miles an hour. I find that when I'm pedaling casually with maximum pedal assist, I'm in the, in the range of 22 miles is, is typically good for what I get. Um, and that's how I like to ride. At this point, I usually stop and we'll let the customer start asking questions. Another question that I get all the time is, um, how did you come up with the name baby maker? So that came from Rob and our founder, uh, Rob, our founder, and uh, a small team. I think it just came to him one day. Something that I would add is that everybody here seems to really enjoy movies and kind of there's movie quotes all around. The main um, electric skateboard is called the Sex Panther. That comes from Anchorman. And then there's a um, ABC always be closing uh, quote in our conference room. Shout out if you have seen Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. I feel like at this point that might be a bit of an older reference. One of my goals here as the weekend bike tech that is going to start making this video series is to have a coffee sponsor, which we don't have right now. Uh, but as they say, coffee is for closers. Another question that I get a lot is, can you please, please ex explain PAS or pedal assist levels? Um, the baby maker comes out of the box with a one to five level system. So one is the least pedal assist, five is the most, is kind of how it works. You can click um, on the display up and down and it can, it'll toggle in real time while you're pedaling between the different levels. PAS five or PAS four, so the max or almost the max is where I tend to ride it, um, especially on my commute. A PAS five uh, comfortably takes me to 22 miles an hour. A PAS4 is uh, up, up to, for me, 18 miles an hour. Everybody is gonna vary a little bit, but that's kind of a, a realistic road range. And I find with one, two, and three, I'm just not really in it enough to, to get an accurate sense of, of how much it, it takes me to. Be aware that which the, the PAS levels that you're riding on dramatically change the power, the battery, uh, the battery range. So more power, more PAS, so max, max level five, you're gonna get less uh, range on that battery. And then conversely, right, if you're running in uh, level one, so minimum assistance, that's how you're gonna get those huge mileage range. A conversation that I have with, the, with new customers all the time is that they wanna upgrade and swap out parts. So I've been in the bike industry going on 15 years now, um, but this is my first dedicated uh, D2C direct-to-consumer company, and it's been um, really cool um, getting to know the customers and the community as well as how the company functions. One of the big differences is that in a traditional bike shop, I find that most people are grabbing the bike stock out of the shop and giving it a shot versus um, we get a lot of customer um, questions on, can I swap out X part? Something that I always recommend everybody is to ride the bike stock out of the gate and to see what you like, what you don't like. Um, 
I know that there's a lot of reviews on the saddle or on the handlebars and that kind of stuff. And I, I would say a lot of the, of the tweaks are, are personal. Um, it's kind of a personal choice that fits you and fits you on the bike. What I would recommend you getting out of the, you know, when you purchase the bike is something like a water bottle cage, a water bottle, a lock, um, and then the, the stuff to fix a flat. Those kind of things are critical to every rider and you're gonna need those. Something like swapping out the handlebars is a bit more invasive and or intensive as a process. Um, depending on which handlebar you go, for example, you may have to change the brakes because there's only so much cable length um, that comes stock. Or if you go to a road handlebar, these mountain biking brakes traditionally um, aren't meant for a road. And so you're doing, I guess where I'm going with this is that you're doing additional modifications um, that we are definitely here to answer your questions, but just know that it's a more involved process. And where I would push you towards is the, the bike plus those, uh, those um, kind of core add-ons is the best way to start out with your baby maker. A question that I get all the time is, what do I do if I get a flat? And I guess I'm gonna start that by breaking some bad news to you. If you ride enough, you will get a flat. It is not a matter of if, but a matter of when. That being said, with the knowledge of how to swap out a flat tire and some preventative steps, uh, you can kind of eliminate any concerns you have about fixing the flat tire and empower yourself to go ride more. I do wanna say that this is uh, from looking at the poles and stuff, the number one concern and the number one reason why riders don't ride more is safety, right? Having cars on the road, that kind of stuff. The number two concern is usually a flat tire. Knowing what to do, knowing how to swap it out, um, that whole stuff. Today, what I wanna do is to share the tools and the supplies that I bring on my ride in order to fix a flat. Unique to the Baby Maker and these track style bikes is that the rear axle um, is bolted on. <coughs> uh, that's done in any sort of horizontal dropout case. And so you're gonna need a 19 millimeter wrench in order to take that wheel off. Then from there, it goes to uh, a standard fixing flat kit. Uh, I use the Pedros bike levers, but any, and that's the yellow lever you see in the picture but any lever will do. That being said, uh, it's a secret of bike techs that almost every bike tech that I know uses those levers. They're super strong. You can break them, but if they break, you're probably doing something you shouldn't do and you want it to break. Um, and so it's kind of just the right strength to be the ideal lever. From there, you need a replacement tube. So the tire size um, of the Baby Maker is 700 by 28 millimeters. 700 is a standard road wheel, and then 28 millimeters is the width. When you go to purchase a tube, the tubes will have a range of widths. So sometimes you get one that is a 23 to a 28. It's not uncommon to see a size 28 to 32. As long as that tire range as 28 millimeters is within the tire range posted the tire will work and in a pinch you can actually use a, a tube that's either too large or too small you don't want to do that um, you don't want to do that for a long ride but we're talking like you want to get back home here now if you have the choice you always go with the smaller tire so for example my replacement tube Sorry, if you have the choice, you always want to go with the smaller tube. My replacement tube is, is a uh, 23 to 28. So that's the range, right? So it's on the smaller side as opposed to, for example, the 28 to 32. Another thing that you need to know is that you need a Presta valve. That is um, specific to the rim type. There's two out there, Presta and Schrader. Presta is the smaller one. And so if you accidentally get a Schrader, it'll be too large of a diameter and the tube won't fit through the rim and you will be um, out of luck. So make sure you do that. The final piece that I, that I take to change out um, a tire is a way to reinflate it. I vastly prefer the CO2 canister and valve setup 
Um, the disadvantage of that is that you only get one shot. So if you mess it up, um, you're out of air and out of luck. Uh, in that case, uh, a lot of people I know will bring two canisters or something like that. So make sure you know how to use it before you take it on the road. The other option is to bring a mini pump with you. It's a bit slower and a bit more labor intensive, but the plus side is that um, you have as many chances as you have arm strength. Let's talk about sizing. The Baby Maker comes in two different sizes, and I know from answering a lot, all these, a lot of questions is that it's hard to visualize, right, the, the two sizes available. Uh, that is a 23 inch and a 19 inch. And so what that translates to, or what we call that, is a small, medium, or a medium large. Those are our two sizes with the Baby Maker. They both have the double diamond design, which means they both kind of look taller than a traditional bike. A lot of times this top tube is angled down, and that's not the case with the Baby Maker. Um, it's a stylistic choice, and, and I, it's one that I really like. Um, that being said, it's something to be aware of when you're looking at sizing. So the critical number to think about or the critical height to think about is five foot eight. If you're above five foot eight, you're going to be in a medium large baby maker. And if you're below that, you're going to be in a small medium. There is a little bit of, um, of play here because the seat is adjustable and you can dial it into the optimal length. So if you're at 5'8 or close to it, you can actually go either way. And it depends on, the choice depends on whether you want a large bike or a small bike. I'm somebody who likes uh, to ride larger bikes. They are, um, they are a, a bit more comfortable and a bit more like cruiser style. They hold their line better versus a smaller bike is a bike that you can um, steer and maneuver a little bit easier. And so the choice is kind of yours in, in terms of which direction to go. Uh, a thing to note is if we look at the video here, um, I'm riding, this is a picture of me riding the large bike. And so you can see it's the seat, host, the seat post, uh, the seat height is set correctly. And my legs are fully extended or nearly fully extended at the bottom of the, of the downstroke. And then as I come up, there's ample room for my knees to, to to rise and, and stand up. Um, that is the optimal pedal height. And at that height, you get the most efficient, you're the most efficient when you're pedaling. One of the drawbacks there is that when the seat, uh, when the seat post is that high, you're on your tippy toes kind of touching the ground. And I know a lot of new riders don't like to do that it is totally fine to back off and lower the seat down a little bit. You're getting less than optimal pedaling efficiency, but it's more comfortable. You can, you can touch the ground easily if you need to. Um, and if you go too low, uh, as you'll see in the picture here, my knees are coming up to my chest. Um, that makes for a real uncomfortable ride, an overly compact or cramped ride. But, uh, and so on a traditional bike, we advise people not to do that. One of the advantages about an e-bike is that you have all this extra power. And so I would steer people to a riding position that they find most comfortable. And then over time, as you're doing more miles, you're gonna naturally want to raise your seat to that optimal position where, you're, where your knee is nearly fully extended because it'll just be more comfortable. And that's it. We have covered the most common questions I get working here as a bike tech. If I didn't have a chance to answer your question, leave it in the comments below and maybe we'll answer directly or even make a future video addressing that. Thanks for wrenching with me today.